Let's talk a bit about torque. You will see that I have these two uh, binder clips attached here, pretty close to the same distance, and it's balancing pretty well. Of course, if I take them and I make one closer than the other, well, now it doesn't balance anymore. The force doesn't seem to matter as the force doesn't seem to matter if there's a change of distance. So the distance matters as well. Well, I don't have these set up beforehand, but if I put a heavy mass over here and a light mass over here, and if I'm fortunate, oh, those aren't too far off, they balance. <clears throat> so notice that a small force in a long distance can balance a large force in a small distance. We call this torque. This one will rotate it that direction if I, lift, if I take this mass off. We call that clockwise or a negative torque. This side over here is a positive torque. If I take that one off, again, it rotates it this direction, which is a positive torque. Behind it, you see the pegboard. Well, let's discover a little bit more. Since we know that horizontal distance matters, <clears throat> let's prove that. If we take one, two, three, four, five, six on this side, and six on the other, you may or may not be able to see that little piece of metal right there. I have something behind it in order for this to balance because, as you can see, it's not symmetrical. Um, so notice, if I am one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, they balance. If I move this inward, and I'm going to move it in quite a ways, you notice it doesn't balance anymore. That arrow has gone off from balance. That's exactly what we saw before, that the distance matters. Well, what about the vertical distance? doesn't seem to have moved. Let's get drastic. It didn't move. It stayed balanced. What if I move this one up? It stayed balanced. So we are believing now, we're starting to, to get confirmation that the vertical distance that I move this, or the distance along that line, does not seem to matter. I call this the line of force or the line of action. I, I use line of action when I'm doing uh, linear momentum to angular momentum because you're doing R cross P and the momentum goes in a particular line. <clears throat> so here, if you'll notice, if I go anywhere along this vertical line, and notice it's not just that the line is vertical, it's that that's the line that follows the, uh, the force. The force is vertical, this line is vertical, and it appears that this distance or this distance don't matter. Only that six hole difference on either side. We'll go back up to it. This distance seems to be the only one that matters, whether it's the negative torque on this side or the positive torque on this side. That distance that's from the line of action or the line of force, the perpendicular distance from the uh, pivot to that line is called the moment arm. Let's show it to you in a different way. So instead of this one pulling this direction, let's go ahead and let's take, I need to get down six, one, Six. I need to lift this up a little bit. And it's not a, uh, I don't have this set up on a pulley, so it's not going to be perfect. I'm going to move that one. And part of the problem with this, this demo is that the, uh, it torques it this direction. But notice, it's basically in the same spot, or very close, and I'm going to change it and move it over here. Once again, it balances, and if I move this down again, which we know is not going to affect it, it still balances. Here's my line of force, parallel to the force, in this case, which is tension. So anywhere on this line is the same line of force or line of action, and this would be the moment arm from this pivot straight down, which is the same as the moment arm for this line of force, six, uh, six holes from the pivot. 